Activision, oh Activision, why won't you just piss off with your scummy actions? Call of Duty is pretty much the only known series they've ever published, except for Destiny, but I don't like to be reminded of that existing. The treatment of Modern Warfare Remastered has already been known as a nightmare. The announcement that originally the game was only going to be available to be bought with Infinite Warfare at a cost of £60 or $80 was already a sign that Activision had no idea what they were doing, or that they just didn't trust Infinite Warfare to sell enough. And well, they were right, Infinite Warfare is bad. Like, no joking, it's really bad. The story might be as good as it damn well wants to be, and hell, the zombies mode could be as fun as it wants to be, but the multiplayer is the worst in the series, not because of the maps, even though they are awful and easily the worst in the whole series. No, it's because the gameplay of the whole game is just so bad. It's so boring, it's so terribly executed that the whole game ends up being a 4 out of 10. I could not finish the game, I just couldn't bring myself to because it's just so unbearable, it's so tedious, and that's kind of saying a lot for the Call of Duty series. And that's actually a first, I've finished every other Call of Duty campaign except this one because of the gameplay being that bad. And the Zombies mode, well it's the same as the previous Zombies mode, so honestly what the heck does that matter to more towards the game, when you've got much superior games in the series such as Black Ops 1, 2, 3, and hell, Worlds at War. But anyway, Modern Warfare Remastered is the subject of this video though, and well, putting aside the terrible treatment of it from Activision, I'll have to admit, this is a pretty good remaster, it's superb actually. The story mode is as great as it was 10 years ago, and the updating graphics can really be seen. It looks beautiful, comparing it to the original version you can really see the advancements in graphics since 2007, I can't believe it's been that long since Modern Warfare actually released actually. And well, it shows that Raven Software took real care with this remaster for the story. It's just as fun as it was all those years ago, and it's beautiful once again. But honestly, the story is just as good as it was all those years ago. And well, on it, that itself, the game is worthy of an 8 out of 10 for the story, because it still carries over some of the issues that the game was known for all those years ago. The game was easy as heck unless you played it on hard and on veteran, and some of the mission designs were really finicky, and obviously the story's length has not waged well at all, with it being around about 6-8 to eight hours, something that would keep on going until about Black Ops 3. The multiplayer though, that's where I must focus, because it's where most of the changes are, and by jolly, this is going to be painful to review. The gameplay is superb still, it's faithful completely with its gameplay, nothing's changed there, there aren't any sudden jetpacks or double jumps, but it's really obvious that Activision's greed would not end with the release of the remaster being alongside Infinite Warfare. And sadly, it's really showing. The microtransactions have been added, and honestly, I don't think this is too bad. I think most of these are cosmetic. There are a few weapons that have been added, though, and it's obvious some of them are more better than the actual standard weapons. Uh, there's a machine gun, I think it's called the Birken, and that's a completely overpowered weapon. It's one of the most powerful weapons in the whole game. That's something you can get from these crates. Uh, most of the other weapons are melee weapons. Most of these don't do much change towards the actual original knife. But some of them you can see are a bit faster to use and may get more lunge. This is a bit of an issue. Luckily, they're not too unbalanced though. Most of them are balanced by other stats that can sometimes negative so for instance one could have a lot of range but it takes a long time to use you know stuff like that and something else i can't complain too much on is the addition of new maps or well limited maps that are actually reskins currently there have only been two a saint patrick's day remake of downpour and a summer version of bog both maps felt great and didn't change the balancing of the maps at all and i hope they continue this because they're really damn fun even if they also bring microtransactions with them I think the only big change I noticed with these maps was that Bog had extra cover put into it, but it still felt balanced. And actually, I feel like it was more balanced than the original version of Bog, which I... Great, I'm really happy about that, because personally, Bog, one of the worst maps in my opinion, alongside Countdown. I'm really happy they added this new cover, and I'm hoping these stuff will continue for that same reason. These are really fun events, and I can't complain too much with them. So you may be all asking, what's wrong with the multiplayer? What's wrong with the game? Well, the issue of the game is, believe it or not, everything I said I wasn't too bothered about in multiplayer can be debunked 
easily with the definition of two words. Those words being remaster and remake. See, this is an apparent remaster from the name, when in actuality, it's a remake. A remaster in terms of games is to faithfully re-release a game with improved graphics and sounds, whilst a remake is to make something again or differently. So the issue is that Activision have completely lied with their game because the addition of microtransactions actually makes this a remake and the re-releases of maps, new versions, makes it a remake. This is complete bullshit and for that reason, I was originally going to give the multiplayer component a 9 out of 10 because it's a great remaster for the multiplayer, but it's microtransactions lets it down a notch. The multiplayer in the original version of the game was a 10 out of 10. But after thinking about it, and the remaster is instead, it's not a remaster, it's a remake, I'll have to give that component a 7 out of 10. And that's kind of the kindest score it's ever going to get. And finally, the addition of having to pay £15 for the variety pack, even though it was originally £10, and even worse, it was actually free on PC, lowers the overall score down even more, because I cannot support this treatment, these scummy actions by Activision. And to finally give it a PC review score, two different review scores actually, uh, I'm going to have to say the port, the port is absolutely abysmal. So apparently from the release it was actually an okay port, it was stable, but an update broke it and it's obvious, shaders have to load in, sometimes doing it every time you load, this can take up to about 5 to 10 minutes. Sometimes it won't do this and even then the game could drop down to as low as the tens in FPS. And this is ridiculous for a computer build like mine, which is a GTX 980 i7-4790K and 16GB of RAM. I'd have no clue how a PC port like this got past Activision at all. All this put together, it pains me to give this game a score of 7 out of 10 for consoles and a 6 out of 10 for PC. If you took away the scummy actions and the PC port issue, this would have been an easy 9 out of 10. That's how big the fuck up is with Activision here. I cannot recommend it even still with this above average score. The fact they want you to buy it for $40 or for £35 is nothing but insulting. It's worth at best £15 just like the original version on Steam. If you are looking at an Infinite Warfare Legacy Edition then don't even do that. Even though you can actually find it for £20, which is cheaper than the Modern Warfare standalone version, which is a good way to get it for cheap, extra way, the game itself is a 4 out of 10, and mix that with Modern Warfare Remastered, it equals up to a 6 out of 10 for consoles and a 5 out of 10 for PC. I cannot stress this enough. Do not buy Infinite Warfare Legacy Edition, because you'll be supporting the scummy actions by Activision, which may lead them to do this again in the future. And if rumours are to be shown that Modern Warfare 2 Remastered is a thing, they will probably do this again.